Hey everyone, it's Kalen from White and Reverie. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and talk about the brand new Final Cut Pro X 10.4 update. Now this update unleashes so many options in the new color tab that we have access to. You might have noticed also, I have a haircut. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you would have noticed that I chopped it off with an ax. Yes, that is correct. Um, but besides the point, let's go ahead and dive in and start talking about the new options that we have in the 10.4 update with Final Cut Pro X. All right, so let's get started. We went ahead and updated our Final Cut Pro to uh, 10.4, so that is what we're working with now. Um, if you go to your effects browser, we now have uh, more options in the color tab here. So originally the color board was called uh, the color correction, and now we have color board, color curves, color wheels. We have an additional uh, to load your custom LUTs. Uh, and then also our hue saturation curves. So those are all the different additions that we now have in our color tab. And if you look up here, our color tab is going to be here in our inspector window next to the video and audio and info tab here. So if we go ahead, we can either select a clip and we can drag any one of these on there. Let's just select our curves and drop that on there. And you'll see it loads it on right here. If we want to click in, you can still do your command six and now you have access to curves. You can either view it as a single curve or you can view it as uh, all curves. Uh, one thing I wish would have been amazing is if in the single curve option that if you're able to change your red and green um, ranges that'll actually overlay them all so we can kind of see them, but we can't have that. So I'm actually gonna use the all curve section, but if you click up here, you can uh, add more additional corrections. So the color board originally is what we had. Um, it's pretty much the exact same. And then we have uh, the color wheels. Now, the color wheels is one of my favorite features with this update. Uh, what's really great is I can technically not even ever use the color, um, the color board anymore because now I have access to the colors. Um, I actually have access to the exposure levels, and then also the saturation levels. So from now on, I'm probably gonna be using just the color wheels and not the color board anymore with this new update. Also, you can see that we now have an awesome temperature slider, which is really great. And then also our tint if we need to dial in some of that. Um, you can mess around with your hue as well, that affects everything. So up here in our, our, um, our window, if we wanted to go ahead and you can see we have our, our video scopes, and this is our RGB parade. We have our highlights. This is shot on a Sony A7S. Our highlights are over 100 IRE, so we're gonna drop them down and just take the highlights. We're just gonna drop them down until they're right below 100, and then we can also adjust our shadows if we wanted to, and then up our midtones, whatever we kind of wanted to mess around with there. I'm gonna undo those. And now we can obviously push over to our shadows. What's really cool is if I'm pushing two accords of color, it'll actually showcase that color in the left side right here. So if I wanna to push towards blue or cyan, I'll see the color in the left as a reference, which is really great and super helpful. I'm gonna refresh that. Uh, if you want to fine tune your settings, so say you wanted to adjust more of the, the shadows here, we can go ahead and actually take in the actual number and just select the blue range right there. So over here in our scopes, you can see I'm just slightly adjusting it if you just wanna finesse it a little bit. That's a way to dial it in even a little bit more and then obviously you have your saturation and brightness levels too. So you can do that down in a slider option or you can keep that up here in the wheels. So this is the color wheels section in the inspector. And let's go ahead and look at the, uh, now the hue saturation curves. Now this is probably, this is my favorite feature. I love this even more than the color wheels. And the reason for that is just so much power that you have access to in here. Now this is very consistent with DaVinci Resolve as well. Uh, so for instance, let's go ahead and look at our hue versus hue. If you wanted to select a hue, we can use our eyedropper over here. Let's say we just select uh, some greens right here. And it's gonna drop a point right here and tells me that is where the range is. And I can just change the hue of that, whether I wanna warm that up or I can uh, bring that closer to a blue range. I can move that and I can spread out the option as well. So you can do a wider sweep. You can see you can get some really interesting results. So, you know, warming up your greens, this might be a really good option to do that. Um, and if you want to take your overall level down, you can use this slider over here. Um, and just double click that to get rid of that. 
If for instance you don't like this spot, you can just go ahead and push the delete button and that'll get rid of that as well. I'm gonna reset that. For our Huber saturation, this one I love using to make things pop. So let's for instance, let's say, let's go over here to this blue jacket and we're gonna go ahead and we can just go up here and add our hue saturation curves. And we're gonna go ahead and select the blue jacket. If I click and hold, I can spread it out. It gets me an even range. And then I can saturate just that blue jacket, which is really helpful. And um, it helps you fine tune things. So maybe let's also select the skin tone. And we can go ahead and just dial that up with some saturation or less. Um, you can play with all those different settings and you can see that um, taking and adjusting those colors overall. Let's go ahead and redo that. Now um, for hue versus luma, this one is gonna take the luminance level of uh, an actual color. So if we wanna actually drop down the jacket, actually let's make sure we're selected on this eyedropper, select that, and then I'm gonna actually drop down the luminance level of his jacket. So you can see that it gets darker a little bit, but if you go too far, you'll see some artifacting, um, which you do not want. So you just wanna be gentle with that, but that can really help, especially if you have some overblown skin tone maybe that you wanna kind of adjust a little bit. So maybe let's select here, uh, hue saturation curves, and then hue versus luma, let's select his skin right there. And you can just drop that down, so. There we kind of have the highlight part of his uh, face is kind of evened out now. So let's just check, let's just uh, disable. So somewhat of that, you know, it's a little harsh there, but that's kind of the general idea. Um, and now once we get down to the Luma, Luma options down here, this is really great as well. Now, uh, if we are to use, let's go to this shot right here. Sometimes for instance, we have a lot of highlights that are pushed that are uh, not pure white, and we have some blacks that are not pure black. This is really helpful for this, that tool right here. So I'm actually gonna make two points, pull down my highlights, and I'm gonna also pull down my shadows. So you can see that as I sweep this over, his blue jacket here is lining up to be all the way desaturated, which is gonna be black. So if you want your shadows to be um, perfectly black, this is the best way to do that. Also your highlights, you can see her dress and her skin that's gonna start turning white and lose some of that color, but maybe right at the top, you kinda of wanna have that. So you can see if we drop it, all the highlights are there. So this is a really awesome function tool to use. I'm really excited about that. And then saturation versus saturation. This one is going to uh, you know, just saturate the, uh, the shots that are already saturated and then desaturate the ones that are least saturated. So um, let's choose just choose his jacket here. So here, um, if I'm going to boost this up, I'm going to be increasing the overall saturation of the most saturated spots, which this is helpful because the skin tone is not as saturated and I don't wanna affect that as much. So, and then lastly, we have the orange versus sat. This is already dedicated to uh, the skin tone, which is orange. Um, you can change that to any color that you want. Let's start with orange. And you, this is almost very consistent with the hue versus saturation, which you're picking a hue and then adjusting the saturation. But this lets you to fine tune it a little bit better because you're uh, really uh, affecting that individual hue the best. So um, you can see the skin tone right here. You can adjust how saturated it is. Maybe just the mid-tone version of it. And this will allow you to really hone in on really good skin tone. Um, and then we can obviously switch this to blue and just maybe we get some of that blue coming out of his jacket right here. And we can increase that by doing another, combining this to the hue versus saturation and bump this up. Let's move this over. So now we have even more of a saturation of his, just his blue jacket. Um, you can toggle that on and off and see the difference there. So that is the hue saturation curves window. And you can go back to your video tab and you can see that you can rearrange the order of everything. Now this is really helpful. And obviously you can click on there and you can select your, cor your corrections from up here. If you don't like one, you can just select it and push delete and it kind of gets rid of it up there as well. If we wanna go ahead and load a LUT as well. So if we end up right here back in this effects browser, let's choose our custom LUT. 
Let's drag that onto this clip. And instantly, we now have a custom LUT section, which is so amazing. Uh, now we don't have to use any third-party plugins. We can use this natively inside Final Cut to load our LUTs. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and you can choose your own custom LUT section. I actually have all my LUTs loaded right over here and I can use that as a folder. Um, so then it puts my folders right here and it's easily accessible. So we've actually created for White & Rivery our own collection of LUTs and we call that Timbre. Uh, if you're interested, you can actually click on this link up here in the right hand corner. That will give some more information on those LUTs if you're interested in that. We'll also have a link in the description as well. But we can go ahead and choose, let's say we're gonna choose Timbre 4. So this is a LUT that we've created and we really like the way it pulls in the greens and uh, the reds and oranges. So that is the focus of this one. You have an overall mix or opacity uh, of that LUT, which is really helpful. What's really neat is if you want to, you can go ahead and we can add multiple uh, LUTs. I'll just double click it. And here we're gonna go ahead and choose, let's use chamber one, and we can just finesse these a little bit to our liking, which ones we like the best and you can just rise that up there. We can go back to our color wheels and we can choose an overall, you know, our highlights, maybe you want our shadows to go on. Uh, I see the skin is a little bit harsh here, so let's go ahead and add a color curve and we're gonna go ahead to the Luma slider and we're gonna make a few points and we're just gonna drop it right here, which is closer to the skin tone range. Um, you can see before and after. We kinda wanna balance this out a little bit So, brings back a little bit more saturation to the skin by dropping that range there. We could also use the, uh, the little uh, color picker, and you can see exactly where that line is. So, um, the skin tone line we want to drop right up here. So, that's really helpful whenever we're using the color picker. So, um, and then you can obviously rearrange everything like we just mentioned. So, we can move this in between the LUTs. We can use it before the LUTs. Whatever range you want, which is really helpful. So that is uh, the main color tab that we have access to in Final Cut Pro X 10.4 update. We're really excited about the new color wheels, the curves, uh, the hue saturation curve options, and obviously loading our own custom LUTs. So this is actually gonna allow us to stay inside Final Cut X to do all of our grading now. We're not gonna have to go out to DaVinci Resolve or other programs that we would want to use to color. We can keep everything internally now. I love all the native options that we now have access to and you can go and save. Maybe you have all these settings set the way you like. You can save that effect preset, and you can go over and just right click once you save it, and you can make that the default video effect so that now, when you're ready to add it, it's just one quick key, and you can set that up. Also, in your preferences window, you can decide in your um, editing section what is gonna be your default color correction. So I'm gonna change that to color wheels, because that's what I wanna have now. So if I click on Command-6, you'll see that I now have the uh, options for the color wheels. Once I make an adjustment, it will add that to our effects window. So this is the Final Cut 10.4 update with a lot of the new color options that we now have access to in Final Cut Pro X. So hopefully this was helpful, kind of showcasing a lot of the different color options in the new update that we are stoked on. If you have comments about some of the new functions and new features and want to know our opinions, just leave them in the comment section below. And lastly, we have just launched our first custom color presets for wedding filmmakers, and you can check that out. We have a link in the description below. It's helped out our workflow so much to have really good consistent skin tones, and it's really increased our quality of our films with the new LUTs that we're using. So check those out, and as always, please subscribe.